Hello there everyone, welcome back to another edition of Pimp My Filter and in this video I've got another filter that I'm pretty excited to be taking a look at. This one is the Fluval G6 which is by far the most expensive filter that Fluval do. It's also the most technologically advanced as well and this was sent to me by a guy called Stuart so thank you very much Stuart. I have been wanting to take a look at one of these for a long while because it's been years since I've looked at one of these. I've got to admit, the first time I saw one of these, I thought, what's the point in all of that electronic gadgetry? And uh, You know, I was a bit dismayed at the shape of the trays and so on. But after getting into this particular filter and having a good hard look at it, I can kind of see where Fluval are coming from with regard to the actual design of the filter. Not so much the electrical parts though. Now if anybody's got one of these newfangled air fryers, you'll probably think that this looks pretty much just like an air fryer. You know, you put your chips in the front here, switch it on, 20 minutes later your chips are ready. Or should I say, your fries are ready if you're watching in the US. In the UK we call fries chips. Or at least we do up north, probably down south, where the more cultured people live, you may call them fries. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is put a link to a Fluval video which shows and explains how this thing works, where the water flows, what all this electronic nonsense does at the front, and I'll let you look at that video, because in this video, I'm gonna be concentrating more on the construction quality, explaining how the water flows through, what comes with the filter, and also showing if there's any way we can improve the efficiency of this particular filter. And the reason I only kind of go into those details with filters is because ultimately that is what is important. So with normal filters that would be how much foam it holds and also how much filter media it holds. This one doesn't use any foam. Uh, I actually think that's a bonus because it's got quite a good cartridge which you'll see in a moment. And whilst it isn't very big, and the trays are a horrendous shape, I have managed to fit quite a lot of media into here. So let's get the top off and take a look inside. Yes, I am wearing swim shorts. What of it? Okay, so we've got some nice sturdy release clasps on each corner. Oh, actually, I'll just show you this one first. That lifts up, that opens up, and that gives us direct access to these two cartridges, which I'll show you in a moment. That is an idea which is beginning to gather popularity years after these first came out. Other manufacturers are realizing that the mechanical part of your filtration, i.e. the pre-filter, is handy if you can extract it without pulling the whole filter apart. As far as I know, Fluval did it first with the G6. Right, so I've got an innie and an outie here. Water's drawn in from the tank. Oh, come on. <laughs> All right, it's drawn in from the tank. Then it goes through the inside of this cartridge which is a 75 micron cartridge. It's got a 75 micron screen in here and it's pleated to give it maximum surface area. It's very much like the cartridges that you get in a hot tub, except it's not like paper filters. This is a pretty good quality hard plastic by the looks of it, which can be washed out. And to enable that washing to be easier, Fluval include one of those, which is a stiff brush which when you take this off, you just drive on in the middle of that, it washes all the muck off. I'll explain more on that in a moment, but basically the water bleeds out through there into this chamber. It then goes into this chamber, which has another cartridge in. It goes in there, it's pretty hard to see all this, which is why I'm gonna link the Fluval video. But the water goes through there, it then goes into another cartridge, up and out, the back, over here, down the centre, 
Ooh, I've given away what I've used for the filter media there. Not to worry. Goes down the center, into the bottom, and you've got about a quarter of an inch gap under the trays. Then it flows up through three trays. Then it gets drawn out from here by the pump and spat out back to the tank. Now, because I've given away what I've used for the filter media in here, I might as well show you what comes with it. They're called G nodes. They're basically a ceramic filter media made from ceramic dust. Now, whilst this might have a massive surface area on a proper surface area test, a test just involves crushing a media and spreading out the dust. When you've got a media that's made of dust, it doesn't matter how good or bad it is, it always gives a good surface area reading. This stuff is pretty much sealed. Dust sticks too tightly. You know, you might have a few tunnels in here, but it's not very good media. That's why it's still in the packet. Right, we'll get that out the way. And I'll show you these cartridges. In fact, I'll put this back together and then take the cartridges out to show you how they come out. Okay, I forgot to mention this little button. As you can hear, that is a primer to allow the water to fill up in here totally and get the pump going and so on. This comes apart just like that. Very simple to remove that. And this isn't something that you need to replace all the time. You can clean this out. So let's have a look inside. Hopefully the camera's picking that up, but you can see how well pleated that is. Let's get a close up of the actual mesh itself. You know, you've got a really good catchment area in here, a big surface area, and that should go a long time before it needs to be taken apart and cleaned out. But if you're watching this and you've had a G6 or you've got a G6, please put your comments in the comments section. You know, explain to people how, well, basically how it's worked for you. How often you need to clean it out? Is it any good? Because I haven't used this particular filter. All useful comments will help other people. And really that's what these videos are all about. Just take that bottom bit off there. That's a pretty big cartridge. And that bottom bit, just with a solid base, is so that when you lift it out and the water drains out of here, all the heavy muck is held in the bottom. You're not going to spill it all over the floor. Right. So the other cartridge is actually the chemical filtration. So the water goes through mechanical, then chemical, then biological. And that's okay because the water is going to be very clean by the time it goes in here. Just get the top off that one, like that. And in here, we've got a carbon cartridge. Now I must confess, I actually popped the bottom off this. Which is quite difficult to do, but you can do it. So that's now empty. That's how much carbon come with it. You can use that if you want, or you can just top it up with your own stuff. So if you want it to go more biological, you could go with 550 grams or roughly a pound of bio gravel or similar. And when I say similar, I mean something like Eheim Substrat Pro, something that's gonna fill a small area very effectively and it's going to fill a ridiculous shaped tray very effectively too so that is a good option or you could go with something like zeolite and again it'll take about half a kilo to fill this little chemical cartridge that's another option but in this case just to max out the biological side of things we're going to go with a bio gravel that's a porous gravel made from the same material as the bio home so it supports aerobic and anaerobic bacteria. There we go. And as I mentioned, that's 550 grams or about a pound for you guys in the US. So now that can go back together. 
like so. That can drop in, tighten up, and that's it. That's those cartridges done. So when you wanted to clean this one out, you know, when the flow slowed down, or when this gave you a warning saying low flow, low flow, you know that this is blocked, take it out, clean it out, put it back in, and you're good to go. Let's just get this off again. I'll go into detail about these trays, and then we'll be about done, I think. So one thing I will say before I take this screen off the top, um, this thing is very well made, and everything fits together beautifully. And it, I don't know, it, it's just a very innovative filter, and it's pretty old as well. You know, this design has been out for years. Okay, so as I mentioned, water goes down the middle and rises up through these trays. And in each one of these trays, we've got approximately 1.7 kilos of bio gravel. So there's three trays, and that gives us a good five kilos or 11 pounds for you guys in the US. 11 pounds of bio gravel. That's a canny bit of filter media. That's a hell of a lot of surface area. Then it's a nation of bacteria working hard in here. Just for comparison, if you use the G nodes that come with the filter, combined, these bags only weigh 1.2 kilos. So it's a choice of 1.2 kilos with stuff that doesn't fit in very well, or five kilos. Hell of a difference. If you went with a Bio Home Ultimate, which I normally use for canister filters, you would probably get little more than a kilo or 2.2 pounds in each tray. So that's about three kilos for all three trays. That's why I've packed it out to the max with the bio gravel, really maximize the biological filtration. And that's packed out every part of each tray. Water still flows through it, no problem at all. It'll still support the anaerobic bacteria because it's got a porous structure. As the water gets through the media, it gets deoxygenated, so it goes from aerobic to anaerobic. And in here, that's where all the ammonia, nitrite and nitrate is gonna be processed. Now I've just come to put this thing back together and I've thought, hold on, that looks like there should be a seal in there. Well, that comes in the box, in the big cardboard box. So please remember to put this rubber seal into here before you fill this thing with water and connect it up. And make sure it's clean before you put it in. It's got a little tab here that goes in there. And if you ever need to replace it or clean it, you just grab a hold of the tab and whip it out. So I'll install this for Stuart, just in case I forget, and I forget to tell him and he doesn't notice that it isn't in the box. He sets it away, and leaks all over his floor, and then he calls me an idiot. <laughs> okay, now that's made a difference. When I'm tightening these up, I can really feel the top pulling down and sealing. I didn't feel like that before. Okay, so that is the Fluval G6. Um, it's reasonably compact considering how much media it managed to fit in here. We've got about 12 pounds for you guys in the US or five and a half kilos of media. That's quite a lot. I mean, allowing one kilo per 100 liters or 2.2 pounds for every 26 US gallons that means that this thing should provide a full cycle, which is zero ammonia, zero nitrite, and very low, possibly zero nitrates, for a tank of about 550 liters, or, oh, what is it, in gallons, man, US gallons, about 130 US gallons, or thereabouts. Um, if it's heavily stocked, you can halve those figures. So, it's really, because of the flow rate as well, it's not, I don't think, a, a filter, for a big, heavily stocked Predator tank or a, a cichlid tank. I mean, the, the actual flow out of here, it's only about a thousand 
litres per hour, which is about 265 US gallons per hour. Although the pump is capable of pumping 2,500 litres per hour, which is about 600 US gallons, because of you know all the different pipes and bends and different things that it's got to go through in here, that more than halves the the potential output of the pump. So whilst it might be a two and a half thousand litre pump, in reality it's only pumping a thousand litres per hour. That's still not bad though. It'd be a very good one for a discus tank, you know, if you wanted to fill that cartridge up with peat or something like that, have the water flowing through there. You'd still get a lot of filter media in there and you wouldn't have a, a real blast and flow like you would out of an FX6 or an FX4. So it's a really simple cube shape and although the internals might be pretty complicated at first view, there's not much wasted space in here at all. I mean five and a half kilos of media in here, especially considering how strangely shaped those trays are, is actually pretty good. I would like to see probably a good hundred quid or hundred dollars knocked off the price of this because it is a very pricey filter, especially considering how old this design is. All the tooling for it was done years ago, you know, those machines that manufacture this thing were paid for themselves. I think they could bring the price down on a little bit, but it is a very compact, a very useful filter. And it's well made as well. You know, Fluval do have a knack of making good functional filters. And I've spent a lot of time looking at the reviews of this on all different sites. A lot of the negative reviews I've seen about this were relating to the digital display, but to me that's the least important part of this particular filter. Having that cartridge that's pretty easy to take out and clean is a massive bonus for this thing. Plus, it holds five and a half kilos or 12 pounds of media. That's quite a lot of media in a reasonably small space. And as I mentioned before, if any of you guys out there have one of these or have used one in the past, please put your reports in the comment section below this YouTube video. That will help other people. I haven't used every filter under the sun. I've used a very limited amount. There's hundreds of different types of filters out there. I've only got experience of a few of them. Hopefully what I've run through in this video and the setup that I've proposed will help people. That's about as much as I can offer. So you guys, please help each other in that comment section. Thanks again to Stuart for sending me this. I'll put a link to it in the video description as always, along with anything else that might be useful. Uh, and I'll also put those links in the pinned comment. Thanks for watching. See you next time. And when I say similar, I mean something like Eheim. What the hell's it called, man? Ah! Eheim, not Effie Mac. It's not Effie Mac. It's not Mac Pro. The other one. Oh. Eheim Substrat Pro, man.